morning. We'd like to welcome everyone to join us for this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We'd like to welcome all of you, wherever you're tuning in from, uh, in any part of the country, uh, as we gather today to celebrate the solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. The grace of God and the love of God, the immense love and mercy of the Lord uh, that is offered to us sometimes is not truly appropriated and we ask for God's love and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are God's love made fully human. Lord, have mercy. Your love has won us freedom as God's children. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your spirit empowers us to love others. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus the Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Clothe us, Lord God, with the virtues of the heart of your Son, and set us aflame with his love, that conformed to his image, we may merit a share in eternal redemption. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, You are a people sacred to the Lord your God. He has chosen you from all the nations on the face of the earth to be a people peculiarly his own. It was not because you are the largest of all nations that the Lord set his heart on you and chose you, for you are really the smallest of all nations. It was because the Lord loved you 
and because of his fidelity to the oath he had sworn to your fathers that he brought you out with strong hand from the place of slavery and ransomed you from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Understand then that the Lord, your God, is God indeed, the faithful God who keeps his merciful covenant down to the thousandth generation toward those who love him and keep his commandments, but who repays with destruction the person who hates him. He does not dally with such a one, but makes him personally pay for it. You shall, therefore, carefully observe the commandments, the statutes, and the degree, decrees which I enjoin on you today. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord's kindness is everlasting. The Lord's, the Lord's kindness is everlasting. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not all his benefits. The Lord's, the Lord's kindness, kindness is, is everlasting. everlasting. He pardons all your iniquities. He heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. The, the Lord's, Lord's kindness, kindness is, is everlasting. everlasting. The Lord secures justice and the rights of all the oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. The Lord's, the Lord's kindness, kindness is, is everlasting. everlasting. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger, abounding in kindness. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord's kindness, kindness is, is everlasting. everlasting. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, let us love one another because God has loved us. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that God loved us and sent his Son as expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God remains in us and his love is brought to perfection in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us, that he has given us of his spirit. Moreover, we have seen and testify that the Father sent his Son as Savior of the world Whoever acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in her, and he in God. 
we have come to know and to believe in the love of God for us. God is love, and whoever remains in love remains in God. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be to God. Glory to God, glory, oh, praise him, alleluia. Glory to God, glory, oh, praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God, glory, oh, praise him, alleluia. Glory to God, glory, Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Glory to God, glory, oh, praise him, alleluia. Glory to God, glory, oh, praise the name of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the, the Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus answered, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a lot of talk about love in our lives, in the scriptures, of course. We even love to use heart emojis, don't we, in social media. I do it every once in a while to express how we feel. It's nice, but we all know that love is much more than that. It can't just be nice emotions or pretty pictures. This feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus wants us, I think, to really ponder how much God loves us. So knowing who we are and how we're called, then we can in turn be a people who love. John 3, 16, that great scripture we hear all the time, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus, God's son, is the embodiment of real love. And his sacred heart was flesh and blood, just like ours. And because Jesus lived God's love, he could then show us how to live. Christianity 101. I would say if there was a Christian heart emoji, it would have to have a cross carved out of the center of it because the cross was the cost of Jesus loving. It was sacrificial. It was an offering of self. As we heard from the reading from 1 John, it also made me think of the legendary pioneer in the Catholic Church and in its music history, Father Clarence Rivers. In fact, I used his um, Glory to God Glory as the gospel acclamation. In the early 60s, he wrote the American Mass program and included the song God is Love, based on the second reading today. 
The African, I mean, the American Mass Program introduced the power of the African American spirit and spirituals into the Roman chant in its liturgy. It was kind of groundbreaking. He was ordained the first black priest in the Diocese of Cincinnati in 1956. And yet, very sadly, his first two parish assignments, he wasn't accepted because of his race. And so here we celebrate the solemnity on this day, I think strongly intersecting with our history and our current events. Today is Juneteenth. It marks the 1865 announcement of the emancipation from slavery in Galveston, Texas, even though slavery had already ended two years previous. It seems that being isolated in the Southwest allowed them to kind of put off the implementation of that freedom uh, from the people. So this day has been very important in Texas, but with the recent events in our country, it is taking on whole new prominence throughout our land. I've always wondered, I don't know about yourself, but I've always really wondered, how could Christians justify slavery back then? They even used the scriptures. Even as I also think about how today too many Christians talk about Jesus' love, bringing them comfort, um, you know, oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. But they never really considered the response that that kind of love of God demands from us. Even the depictions of the Sacred Heart, I think, can sometimes get a little too saccharine or sentimental. Jesus' command that we love one another as we are loved is very clear in the New Testament. And it means everyone, even our enemies, even those we have great difficulty in loving, even when we're not feeling it. Being assured of God's love and mercy, of course, is so important for self-worth. We are all children of God. We can stand tall and dignified, no matter who or what is trying to tear us down. Because God's love, I would say, is liberating, just as it was for the Hebrew people during the Exodus. It's no wonder that that story echoes in the African-American church and its spirituals. I would suggest that today we need a renewing of our calling as a Christian people. How are we going to be a people of the new covenant who remain or abide or live in God, in God's love? And how do we live that love day to day? The Feast of the Sacred Heart reminds us that to truly be at home in God who is love, we must also find deep within ourselves, in the power of the Spirit, the ability to open the doors of our heart to welcome others to experience that divine love. Love never loses its power, when it's, but when it's just about nice feeling or a heart symbol, then it gets watered down, I think. True love is inconvenient. At times it's tough, and it's often painful in what it costs us. Paul tells the Corinthians, you know, that great line from Scripture that love is patient, love is kind, it doesn't seek its own self-interest, and it rejoices with the truth. I would add, love builds families, love assures individuals, it heals divisions, and only God's love in us can build up a just society. Rivers' song, God is Love, has this verse. By this shall all know that we are his disciples if we have love one for another. God is love. And he who abides in love, abides in God, and God in him.
On this great solemnity, the Church asks us to proclaim our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in the God who loves us, let us bring our prayers before the Lord and ask for his mercy and guidance. For every Christian to be assured of God's love, that they never hesitate to share love with others, especially in difficult circumstances, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world and national leaders to learn wisdom, uphold basic freedoms for every person, and strive towards justice with mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in our country to honor this Juneteenth Day of Freedom with reparation for the wrongs of the past, acknowledgement of the gifts of the present, and commitment to building hope for the future. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, the children of God, to live the gospel fully by witnessing to the power of love, working tirelessly to end social injustice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in various service professions, including medical and social workers, first responders, and law enforcement officers to intuit the emotional needs of people's hearts, always upholding human dignity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who've been harmed or forgotten or who've suffered because of a lack of love, as well as all in need of physical or emotional healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died and those who mourn their loss, including Barbara Mahoney, Bridget Giblin, and Jose Velez, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer and for the special prayers in the hearts of all those with us today. And please feel free to share your prayers in the comment section on the Facebook page. For these two, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. Loving God, your Son's sacred heart sanctifies us and leads us closer to you. Hear our prayers that we may grow in our love for you and then embody that love toward all who would come to know us. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank you for your offering as you're able to make donations to the ministry here at the Church of St. Paul the Apostle or the Paulist Fathers. Thank you very, very much for all that you give and provide.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, gift of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of the Christ, for he humbled himself to share in our frail humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. May it become for us our spiritual drink. Lord, cleanse me of my sin, wash away my iniquity. Pray, my brothers, my sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable before our loving God and merciful Father. O God, Father of mercies, who because of the great love with which you loved us with untold goodness gave us your only begotten Son, grant, we pray, that being perfectly united with him, we may offer you worthy homage through Christ Jesus our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you raised up on high on the cross, for raised up high on the cross, Jesus gave himself for us with a wonderful love, and he poured out blood and water from his pierced side, the wellspring of the church's sacraments, so that one over to the open heart of the Savior, all people might draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. And so, with all the angels, the saints, and the chorus, the chorus of heaven, we praise you without end as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, Lord. You are the font, the source of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, giving you thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord God, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your people, the church, spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with Timothy, our Bishop, with all bishops, the clergy, and all those who live the good news. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them 
into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Holy Mother of God, the blessed apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we too may be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another some sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. We invite you to be with us in spiritual communion. May the sacred heart of Jesus be close to you. Body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
for he lives and reigns forever and ever. The uh, communion antiphon. Thus says the Lord, let whoever is thirsty come to me and drink. Streams of living water will flow from within the one who believes in me. Let us pray. Made partakers in your sacrament of charity, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that we may be conformed to Christ on earth and merit to be co-heirs of his glory in heaven. For he lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of our God be with you always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us go in God's love and peace to be love and peace to others.